Remember the Ravage Star campaign we did a few months ago? The company we've partnered with to make the miniatures, Lazy Squire Games, have made their reprint live on GameFound for Wild Ascent, the game we're playing in this video. Link in description and pinned in the comments to grab your copy of this fast-paced, wildly lush and gorgeous tabletop game with fantastically detailed miniatures. Did I oversell that? I might be a little biased. They did, after all, sculpt the Ravage Star minis, and they look stellar. Hey there, Wargamers! This is Luca from MiniWarGaming.com, joined by Phil the Glacial Geek. Today we have something very special. Today we will be demoing the newest campaign book for Wild Descent, and it's called Levon Rising. We play and call it work. Now, if you're curious what this is, what we have here today is a choose-your-own-adventure, a gladiatorial arena narrative campaign set in the Wild Ascent world. Mechanically, this narrative campaign will use the core rules of the hunt format from Wild Ascent. Now, if you're unfamiliar with them, Dave and I had previously recorded a Let's Play on Wild Ascent. And if you want to familiarize yourself with the rules before we jump into this campaign, you can click on the link down below in the description, and that will redirect you to the video you need to go to to check that out. Otherwise, Phil and I will be explaining some of the stats, some of the rules, and the interactions of this game as we do play it. But without further ado, let's jump right into the narrative. Now, remembering this is simply a demo, this is but a taste of what the campaign has to offer. But it all starts off with royalty and chains. Prince Torvar, the protagonist as of now, and his companions from the free kingdom of Tykret have been enslaved, forced to fight in the arenas of the Silvestrum to satisfy the bloodthirsty whims of its owner, the sorceress of Arclea. This demo takes place after Torvar and the others have survived several gladiatorial matches, but you must choose how they got here. We're going to be picking from one of three available paths. The Valiant Path, the Craven Path, or the Path of Madness. Phil and I have decided to go the Valiant Path, and if you're unfamiliar with Choose Your Own Adventure, each option here can vastly change the outcome of the story, so a lot of replayability. Now with the Valiant Path, the party has remained valiant in both word and deed, and tossed their lot in with the old ranger from the walled city of Andapola, Sarek. After a grueling session at the training grounds, Torvar and his companions returned to their section of the dungeons for some much needed rest. They were not alone, however. Drusus, the Sylvestrum's reigning champion, was waiting for them, leaning against the entrance with his arms crossed over his well-sculpted chest. Vaclea must be bored again. I'm stuck with you and your circus tomorrow for your match with Koralt. Zalrin was the first to speak of the companions before the others could process the news. Good tidings, my liege. This sweaty bald human shall surely lead us to victory. He can lead me wherever he likes. Galia said sweetly. She approached Drusus and placed her hand on his left bicep, squeezing gently. Would you like to hear the word of Levan in private? I've no need of gods. Drusus said, lightly swatting away Galea's hand. All their sheep! Galia returned to the others. Hmm, your loss. Now rest up. Tomorrow is a big day, Drusus said, leaving without another word. I do not like this, brother, Nihilus said after a moment of silence. He reeks of conspiracy. <laughs> Everyone here has an agenda, do they not, Nihilus? Perhaps, but he wants something, and I have no desire to die so that he might get it. Shall I kill him in his sleep, my prince? Zalrin asked. He may be strong, but the sturdiest of flesh is still weak. Let's set that idea aside for now, Torvar had replied. It'd be a shame to make such a mess. Your wisdom is as boundless as your compassion, my liege. Zalren said sarcastically. Well, it would seem that Drusus is turning this Fantastic Four into a Fab Five for the match with Koralt tomorrow. He was standing like a statue next to the door that led to the stairs up to the arena. Leaning on his massive two-handed axe, he had a bow and quiver strapped to his back, which struck Torvar as an odd choice for a backup weapon for such a large man. 
You ready for this? Drusus asked sincerely. We'll see soon enough, Horvar replied. He and the others donned their armor and grabbed the weapons and equipment they wished to take into battle. When they were all ready, they followed Drusus through the door and up the sand-covered stairs, the cheers of the crowd already ringing in their ears. In the owner's box, Varaclea leaned forward in her throne, staring suspiciously at Torvar's troop. The announcer bellowed as the crowd screamed even louder. Ladies and gentlemen, we've a surprise contender! The announcer paused for dramatic effect, letting his words hang in the air. Drusus, champion of the Silvastrum, shall face Karot! What does this mean, surprise contender? Torval yelled, shifting his weight with the shield on his arm. Drusus pointed his axe at Karot, who had wasted no time in sending his creatures after the troop. Glory awaits, little prince! Apparently, Drusus wasn't even supposed to be here today. Somebody should have a word with the clerks. And here, Phil and I are set up for this encounter against Koraltz and his demonic minions on his side. Here we have Prince Torvar with his troop, his companions from his uh, home country. And then Drusus will be acting as an NPC on our side, of course. And it is a whole mission set up from the campaign book here with special rules included and how everything is set up. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with how Wild Ascent works, this is the gladiatorial arena of the Sylvestrum. It won't be using the, um, the Sylvestrum deck, but it will be incorporating the basic mechanics and combat of Wild Ascent. And again, you can just click on the link down below to uh, check out that video that Dave and I had previously recorded a bit ago uh, that go over uh, a more in-depth of how this all works. But I will give uh, somewhat of a reminder to some people watching here. Taking a look at the stat card here, focusing on uh, those on the left uh, that are more important. Top left corner here, we have movement value and the type of movement, the amount of health they have, the physical defense characteristic, the magical defense characteristic, the range of the attack, the base damage of the attack, and the amount of extra dice that are thrown at the attack, uh, the plus sign or passive abilities, the, uh, the shield, or like the, uh, the shield-like symbol here is a, a passive defensive ability when it's on attack, and then obviously all the words and all that to go along with it. And this is a, um, the format uh, that uh, Phil and I are playing here is uh, off the hunt rules. So this would be a co-op format where we will both be piloting Torvar and his troop against uh, Koralt and his minions, who will be controlled by uh, an, artificial, uh, an artificial deck of instinctual behavior that will dictate what they do and the order they go in. Now for this mission here, uh, a few things are pretty basic. Uh, we decide who goes first between Phil and I. We're going to try and work together to win this encounter. And there we win in one of two ways. We either completely destroy Koralt, executing him and killing him, or wounding him to the point where he's uh, unable to uh, uh, fight anymore, or we force him to take a knee by getting him simply below five health. One of those two will work here. Though we fail this mission, and it's okay either way because both advance the story, if Torvar is taken out, or if Drusus is taken out. A correction on that defeat, if Drusus is slain or all of the Seekers, which are the four party members that uh, we'll be playing here. Now, Phil, the wonderful voice of Gallia, and what's this guy's name? Zalrin. Will be piloting them, and then myself will be controlling Torvar and his sister, Nihilus. Uh, that's who we'll be controlling here. And we get to choose the order they all go in, so... Uh, that's up to us as players. Each Seeker can only activate once per round though, and then the monsters kind of keep going until all the Seekers are done. Uh, now, Drusus here is not a Seeker. He has a set amount of activations, and I'll explain that how that works now. You'll notice that we have a couple of half covers set up, so they're a little bit harder to move through, but you'll gain bonuses to your defensive fighting near them. And then we have a couple of spinning blades set up, which are impassable terrain, and they act as uh, they deal damage to anyone who's pushed into them. But more importantly, we have four altars set up in those specific areas. And randomly, throughout the game, I'm going to be drawing these cards, which are numbered one to four. And uh, we're going to be drawing two every round, and then the two we draw are going to put a charge counter on any one of these objectives, uh, on these altars. And the Seekers can pick up the charge counter simply by moving over them. It doesn't cost an action. You, you, just, you can just walk right past it and pick it up. And we'll be able to... The Seekers 
would be able to utilize them themselves if they had certain upgrades. In this case, they do not. This is just the, simply the demo. But for every two that we collect, they go on Drusus's card. And then the second he has two, after one of the Seekers activate, he immediately activates, draws his instinctual card, and then just does whatever the card says. And then that's how the AI will be controlling him. So we, do, we have to keep him alive, but the AI kind of controls how wild he acts. So we have to keep that in mind as we play. And on the flip side, if we decide to go first with one of our Seekers, then we draw from the Monster Instinct deck. And as an example, we would uh, we flip over Coralt, we'll do this. So Coralt would act on this card, and then it gets discarded. Then one of us goes, then we draw one of these, resolve that, uh, until all the Seekers are done. And then the monsters get one final activation. There's always an equal amount of activations per side. And then we go on to the new round. And uh, we keep resolving this until the encounter is complete. Now, a couple things to note before we begin. If a Seeker, one of our players, starts their turn, starts the round on one of the altars, and that altar randomly generates a charge counter, you have to redraw a card until it goes to a different altar. You can never automatically gain a charge counter just by standing on it. You have to actively move across it. Now, at the end of the round, if there are any uncollected charge counters, Coralt has the ability to gather them up from wherever he is. He will absorb the power of all the charge counters and they will go on his creature card. And, uh, and after that, if he has four or at least four charge counters, he will discard four of them and revive one of the fallen creatures. The first creature that dies will be stored on this card and that will be the creature that he would revive with full health. We have to watch out for that. And otherwise, he would discard four to heal the most damaged creature for five. And on top of all that, he has one additional ability, would be when he activates, if he has at least one charge counter, he will assign two damage to all enemies. And he does not discard his charge counters at that point. And again, I'll remind people, assigning damage circumvents all defenses. It's uh, very hard to deal with. So we have to make sure we collect these charge counters as we fight to make sure that Coralth can't benefit from them and uh, utilize them for Drusus instead. Sometimes we won't be able to do it and uh, we just have to try and mitigate that as much as we possibly can. First round, we're gonna draw to see where these charge counters go. We're gonna go to the first altar and the fourth altar. A charge counter back there and a charge counter over there. We're gonna activate Gallia first, we're thinking. Yes, because she has a mechanic called uh, a priestess without a god. Uh, Gallia begins each encounter with two momentum dice and on activation, roll and assign slash reassign momentum dice to allies. So I get to roll these two uh, momentum dice and then we assign them to our characters based upon how we want them to go. And these are from the arena format, but yes. which we don't typically use normally, but she has a rule that interacts with them. Yes, so uh, we will roll these here and depending upon what comes up, so we've got nothing. nothing. And we also have this one, which is plus one defense. So she can put that on herself or any ally nearby. Yes. Well, not nearby. Yeah, just any, just ally. any ally. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we just make him super tanky or just keep her alive since we're going to throw her up to try to get this. Maybe give it to her? I think so, yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. All right. So we'll give it to her. Boom. So her, her both her defenses will go up by one characteristic. Yeah. Give you a look at uh, Gallia here. So we're going to put that defense on her, which will increase her physical and magical defense both by one. And uh, the other ability she has is on special. Uh, she will heal all allies by one if she attacks. Uh, mysterious benefits. Then she can move four, so she'll come to here, and when she crosses over this, we'll collect this and put it on Drusus's yeah, card. We will put that immediately over here on Drusus, so you can activate when we get one more of those, which is right there. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we'll keep her facing that way because that's her max move. That's her activation, dumb. Dumb. Now we go on to the instinct deck of the other guys. We have Coralt, and he's going to target himself. He's not going to move. He's going to heal all ally creatures for two and assign one damage to all enemies. Ooh. So he's gonna not do anything, but everyone will just take one damage. All right. The health track over here that keeps track of everyone's health, uh, Phil is just gonna adjust everyone's health, unfortunately for us. We all just took, we just took five damage kind of. He just kind of sat there, he did some sort of ritualistic magic, healed everyone, luckily we didn't do any damage to them. And uh, that's it, now that's, that's simply it, now it's our activation. Uh, and I think I wanna go with Nihilus. Okay. Maybe, maybe we wanna collect that later? Yeah. Ah, oh, but she's got range. What's her range? Four, which is not bad. But I'm gonna. I think I want to collect that now. I don't know. What? I think Philip brought up a good point. We'll activate this later. Uh, we don't do, want to activate Drusus too soon because correct. if the cards throw him into the thick of things, he's now out on his own without protection, and we need to keep him alive. So. Yeah, he's gonna be our uh, little. Uh, yeah, he's pretty tanky because he does have 31 wounds left even after taking that one. 
but still, uh, it, it's better not to have him out there on his own. The question is Zaurin or the good Prince Torvar? Who, who's going to jump into the fray first? Ooh, that is good. Maybe, maybe Zaurin, since he's pretty tanky too, will get him all involved. Uh, it's actually the big guy. Show off Zaurin's card. He was kind of slow. But he's got 31 health. He has no physical defense. He's got magical defense. He's like, um, he's a construct. He's a stone construct of some sorts. And he's got a passive, which is exalted. He's immune to bleed and stun effects. And uh, on pulverize, on three specials, he actually stuns the enemy, which is huge if that works out. All right, so he has a movement of three. So we'll go one, two, three. And then I'm going to attack into this guy, which is the, the Trench Watcher. The Trench Watcher. So yeah, you throw what, so his, a five yeah, dice? Yeah, so I throw, so his base is uh, range of one for his attack. It's a damage of two. And then I have five special dice that I get to roll for this. All right, well, the Trench Watcher only has one physical defense here. So he's only going to negate one of these damages. There we go. And we got, ooh, almost two specials. Oh, so almost so still them. four extra, though. So that's going to be a total of six. Because these count as successes even as specials. Correct. Yeah. So he's going to take uh, the total of six damage. Now, the Trench Watcher. Here we have the Trench Watcher. He's got a defensive ability, Unblinking Watch. So on his defense, he ignores all bonus back attack damage, and he will retaliate with physical attack. Range of one, six, he's going to throw six attack dice back at uh, Thalrin. Or Zalrin, sorry. Now, he may have said six damage against the Trench Watcher there, but he is near partial cover. He is adjacent to it, so he'll gain an additional defense, only taking five damage. Actually, he has one, two. He has one base as well, right? Oh, I thought you rolled seven. My no, bad. no, I rolled I rolled four. He has a base of two, so also, a base of six, and then he takes two. two, so he's going to take a total of four. Four damage, which brings him down to 16 health, I believe. He's not the tankiest. So, yeah, we're going to bring him down to 16 there. Pretty good hit, but now he has a retaliation. He throws six dice back at Zaurin, who will also have a bonus da- a defense being near that. But there's no... Wow. <laughs> wow. Luca, there's, what are you doing? To there's me no here? base damage on this retaliation. Yes. It's all damage on dice. But I rolled six successes. Yeah. And so he only and it's physical attack, right? Physical correct. damage. Yeah. So he has a base defense of zero, which means that he, he takes five because he has he's the one this, for the yeah. half. So yeah. he's gonna go down to ooh twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yay tanky. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, their active activation. The demon wretch will activate, and this is what he will do. And take a look at the demon wretch here. We're just going to show them all off once before while they activate. Boiling blood. When he's attacked, he applies the bleed to the attacker because his uh, blood's real hot. He's got expel. On activate, he's going to roll three attack dice. Each special will summon a demon spawn with uh, those stats there. Phil's going to roll that. I'm going to roll it because we saw what you do. I know. When you roll for the enemies here. Uh, there you go. Nothing. That's what you're supposed to do for the enemies, <laughs> Luca. That's what you're supposed Thank to you, do. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> so halt means he's not going to move. He's going to target the lowest, and uh, he's not actually attacking anything. What he will do is uh, slay all demon spawn. He's going to assign one damage to all enemies for each demon spawn slain. But he has no demon spawn, so he's going to do the second part. He, and he's a level two threat, so he's going to do the second uh, bracket there. If there are no demon spawn, summon two of them. Over here. Oh, that's the trench worm. Oh, that's the trench worm. Right. Demon spawn over here. Is gonna, right. We'll spawn one there, and we'll spawn one there, I guess. They're both adjacent to him. Now, typically summons activate immediately upon the creature activating, unless it was part of an action they were summoned. So. In this case, as part of the action, it's the only time they would activate immediately is uh, for his expel ability, where he would spawn one, it would immediately activate, then he would finish his actions. But in this case, all is well. For our activation, I'm feeling bold with the prince, and he'll scream, Die, foul filth, as he activates and charges right into Koralt. Now, for Torvar, I didn't show him off a little bit earlier, but I didn't get to talk about his abilities. He's got a passive called Battle Stance. He begins every encounter either aggressive or defensively stanced. And on activation, I can flip it either way. Uh, he gets more base damage than less defense, or more defense and less attack dice. I'm going to go with an aggressive stance for now until things lo- start looking suspicious. And then on defense, he's got Block, where he could uh, circumvent some damage as well. So he's got to move four. We're going to go, I guess... One, two, three, yeah. and just attack Coralt. Because the goal here is to take out the, gladiatory, uh, the gladiator Coralt here. My base damage is set to four, and I have three attack dice here. So, huah. Ooh, there a seven damage. This doesn't count, I, I'll double check, but that does not count as a, a cover. I think it's just nasty if we get pushed into it. Well, I know it's nasty if we get pushed into it. Uh, but I'm going to be doing seven damage to Coralt. Oh man, I probably should have looked at Coralt's card first. He's got two physical defense. So on defense, Coralt will assign one damage to himself. 
and the allied creature with the highest health will defend against the remaining damage. So Korat's going to suffer one out of the seven, and then the six remaining damage will go against his highest health minion. Looking at all the health over here, it's the Demon Wretch currently because the, the Trench uh, Watcher got beat up earlier. Yeah. So he's got physical defense one on the Demon Wretch, he'll take five damage, but he's got boiling blood, which means bleed now goes on Torvar. No matter what the range is on defense, apply bleed to the attacker. Ooh. Poor Prince Torvar, a little too impetuous, not really knowing what he's doing, is going to be bleeding now. So every time he activates, he'll take a wound unless uh, it gets healed by the Priestess, if that rolls well enough. Okay, well, let's see what we get now. We got Demon Wretch again. Heck yeah. Uh, see if he spawns any demon spawn here. You're going to go ahead and spawn none. Ooh. Good old oh, yeah, Phil. Special it needs, right? Yeah, he needs special. Oh, okay. so activating the little demon spawn first. Uh, they're going to be running up towards the lowest HP and the nearest. Now, equally near uh, would be, well, pretty much Nihilus is the lowest and the nearest. So both of those demon spawn are going to move three squares towards her and uh, mob her. <laughs> Neither of them have any base damage, but they both throw five attack dice. So we're just going to throw this twice at Nylia, and it's magical damage. So we have two damage so far, and then the second one, and we'll reduce accordingly, uh, two as well. Looking at Nihilus, she has one magical defense, so she only takes one from each attack. So she takes a total of two damage, bringing her down to 18. Uh, sorry, 17, because everyone took one damage earlier. And her determination trait there won't kick into effect because uh, there's no status effects on these attacks. Looking at, for the Demon Wretch now, he has an attack, magical attack. It's a range of four. It's going to assign four damage plus two attack dice. So there's no defense against this at all. It's just straight up assigning damage. But we have to figure out who he's going to go for. Now... Uh, Nihilus here is, uh, her line of sight is blocked by the spawn, so the nearest possible target would be, uh, Torbar here. But he's gonna have to turn around completely for one move of his three, and then he's gonna move for two and then turn again to get line of sight and range. Because this would block line of sight and so it would, um, Coralt, but we're drawing a line right through the middle of that square there, so we have, unfortunately, good sight to Torvar here, who is gonna take, uh, four plus up to two more damage. Just two dice. Okay, Oof. he's going to be assigned 6 damage on Torvar. Go from 24 to 18. Okay. Not great. Rough start, rough start. Uh, we have, all we have left is uh, Nihilus here, who we would like to activate that, so Drustin can activate, I guess, or yeah. Drusus. Yeah. I think the goal here is for her to go grab this. So she's going to activate, turn 1. I think this is, like, there's no real super efficient move here. Yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5, because otherwise it's 1, well, Actually, you know what, two, it may be three, better that four, way, because 5. That might be better, because that reduces it just to two versus three things that yeah, can go attack her back. But now, unfortunately, she's on the altar, which means it cannot spawn there next turn. That's fine. We but want to keep moving this way anyway. That goes to Drusus, who will immediately activate after this. And because he activates, it doesn't mean the monsters get an extra one. He's a free activation in between all of our activations. Uh, she obviously has no range or line of sight to anything down in this direction, because the facing matters. So her activation is done. But Drusus is going to use up those two charge counters to immediately activate. And, uh, bam. Now, to clarify something here, we, uh, Phil and I, we didn't say it earlier, but we're technically playing hard mode right now. Because uh, for the creature targeting, it would always go for the first line on the target, where uh, enemy lowest HP, which would have been, I believe, Gallia. Gallia, Gallia for here. most of those attacks earlier. So he would have moved over there to get towards her to try to attack her, and then obviously not been in reach. But with hard mode, we're playing with uh, an additional rural creature targeting. If it wouldn't be able to reach, Gallia through any means, it would then go default to the next nearest target who makes yeah. the most sense. So we'll do so we'd go after the lowest health for the one that he could reach out of the ones he could Correct. reach. Out of all the ones he could reach, and in this case would be Prince Torvar. So unfortunately Torvar gets hit. This this way it always gets creature and act, creatures in activation and uh, it makes it a little more punishing for us. And it doesn't matter if we lose because the narrative still continues that way anyways, and I just I always like a challenge. Yeah, I it's for fun. Yeah. Continuing with Drusus' activation, he's going to advance towards the nearest. Uh, so he'll go one, two, advance five towards the nearest, and then do a four damage attack, uh, base damage attack against that spawn, which automatically kills it. And then a secondary effect would be um, all adjacent enemies to the same target as Drusus would also get an attack against it. Obviously not great against summons, but all the same. Then Drusus would have been our last activation there, but because we took the first turn, the enemies will get one more activation. It'll be a trench worm. Oh, what's the trench worm do? I'll give you a look at the card there. A hey, trench worm. Uh, this thing is very mobile. It bur uh, burrows around the arena, so it's going to dig down underneath. It's going to target the lowest physical defense amongst all of our fighters, which would be Zaurin. Yep. And he will appear in an unoccupied square behind him, 
and do a three base damage, six a dice, six dice attack. Oh. Roll against Zalrin. Uh, okay, so it's just six right. damage. Oh, but minus one because he's got one more physical defense. Yes. But because he's attacking Zalrin from behind, the damage is increased by two. So it's three base damage plus two attack dice that succeeded plus the two from attacking from behind. Total of seven minus one for the cover. So Zalrin takes a massive hit. He goes all the way down to 18 himself. 19 or 19. 25. Six, yeah. yeah. Boom. Big hit. Then we go to the next round. Oof. Well, new round, I, I rolled up a couple new uh, objectives here. So altar, there's one over there. And on number two, where is two? So they're both there. Boop. And a boop. And then we have to decide who we want to activate first with, or if we want the bad guys to go first. All right, so I think we're going to activate Gallia first here, uh, basically to get her, uh, her momentum dice going first, and also uh, to try to just get some uh, damage into some of these yeah, guys. Yeah, because we're getting the crap kicked out of us it's here. Getting we get... we're, get, we're, 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 we're getting hurt. We're getting hit hard here. <laughs> so her momentum dice will be uh, damage and speed. Damage and speed. All right. She's going to give herself the speed, so she'll go to move five, and then the damage can go to whoever. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. I, just I, increases... I'm wondering if we don't do it to him just because of all the what we realize the nastiness over here. Right. So maybe to Zalrin? Sure, Zalrin can take it. Yeah, Zalrin yeah. gets boosted up by an extra damage on that. And yeah. then because she her speed's increased to five, yeah. we're, I think we're going to change our target a little bit here. We're yes. going to go one, two, three, four, five. And then we pick that up on the way yep. and that goes on Drusus. She will attack Worm. She's got one base, um, but it's a magic attack, I think? Yep. So it's a magic attack and then four extra dice. Yeah, so she's got flaming swords. Uh, okay, not bad, that's yeah. three extra damage. Now he's gonna be uh, magical defense two because we're near the half cover. So four becomes uh, two. So, so two damage on two him. Damage. And he has a rule called uh, burrow on defense. Uh, after all attacks are resolved, the place the trench worm as far away as possible from all seekers it may not be performed while stunned. So we're gonna pick him up. And the furthest he could possibly be must be over there. That's because that's one, two, yeah. So this is the furthest he'll be. Otherwise he's over here. Which is still kind of close, yeah. Okay, that's cool. We did a little bit of damage, got that guy out of here. Hopefully he draws like a bad card, but I doubt it. I have, I have something tells me the trench worm just is very mobile. Yes. Yeah, she also has the ability, if she rolled specials on her attack, she could have healed the entire party, but yeah. unfortunately not now. But we're going to activate. Boom. The de demon rich, please. I don't oh. want to see the demon. You know what? We only have five cards in this deck, so we're, we've already gotten through three of them. Yeah. We go ahead and see if we see spawns any more demon spawn. Naturally, Phil's gonna get one more spawn for uh, us. Uh, we're gonna put that spawn, I don't know, there. I guess we're trying to like make it as advantageous for them as yeah. possible. This one here, you're gonna target the enemy with the lowest magical defense, which is Torvar. So he's already there attacking. Yeah, she's go. But then he won't be able to make it since we're playing hard mode. So we're just gonna go one, two, and he will attack Drusus, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's five attack dice with no base damage. Resolve Drusus first, because we're already there. And this is, will do one damage. But Drusus has enough magical defense to not care about that. Perfect. And then the five attacks, or the attack against Prince Torvar will deal. Oh no! Four. But he does have t one magical defense, so he'll go ahead and just take, take three. three. Oof. I'll bring him down to 15 over here. Okay. And then the actual Demon Wretch gets to go. So the Demon Wretch will reassess his target, because Torvar is not in line of sight. He will do a careful advance to get in range of Zaurin to fire at him with his magical attack. But luckily, Zaurin's very good at defending against magical attacks. Yeah. This time, he's not assigning damage, thankfully. Uh, but he does have lifesteal, which is not great. <laughs> so he's going to heal for the damage he deals. The Demon Wretch is a horrible dude. I hate this thing. It's got to die. <laughs> but it's got boiling blood. Ugh. So it's, a four ba it's two base damage and six attack dice. Two plus... Uh, four, so six damage. So we're only gonna deal three damage, but that means with lifesteal, the demon wretch will heal three. So we're down to 16 on Zaurin, and then the demon wretch goes back up to 19. Ugh, I hate it. <laughs> but it's our activation now. Yep. Let's trash that. The demon wretch is at 60. We moved the wrong marker. Boom. We go. We're all around this area. We are gonna activate Zaurin. And we're gonna attack so, this guy. Yes, I'm wondering with the movement. If it's better to, so I can possibly go after him, because I'm immune to bleed, he's, I think, what I want to go for. Ooh. Maybe I go one, one two, two, three, so I can still attack him. But get in a position to But stay to in a position to go for him next time. Makes sense. So we're going to swing that giant hammer. Yep. So it's uh, now base three because he got the momentum dice from Gallia, and I'm rolling five extra special dice. All right. Here we go. 
Oh, don't oh. get the stun, but I still get three extra on there, so that's going to be a total of six physical damage. Minus uh, two, because he's near the opposite. Yeah, so, so it takes, takes four. four. I'm going to bring you down to the Trench Watcher, down to 12. Now, he does have the Unblinking Watch, where he does get to retaliate with the six attack dice. And let's hopefully not roll six again. Oh, oh four. what? Oh. He takes four damage because he has no physical yep, defense. Yeah, no physical defense. Oh, this is brutal. He's down to 12 on Zaurin. And that is it for our activation. We are going to activate the Demon Wretch. Oh, please. Luca! I shall. Why you do this? Do we get spawns? Please no. No. Okay, good. No spawns. And then. Now they activate. Now they're going to activate. They're pretty much going to. Who's gonna, their target? Uh, lowest magical defense again. So okay. we'll hit Torvar with five attack dice. And we'll have to do against Drusus. And against Drusus as well. Because they only move three. He couldn't physically get to Torvar. So five attack dice against Torvar. The Prince! No! That's uh, three damage, but he's got magical defense of one, so he takes two. Torvar is down to 13. This is rough. And then the attacks against Drusus. Two. two. But he has two, so he's fine. But he's got a careful advance. He's going to go to a safer position two, to attack Torvar. Three. From, and then turn around for four. four. Just to bomb a shot at Torvar. Now, unfortunately, this is uh, base damage four with two attack dice. Oh boy. So let's see how much more damage this deals. It deals one more damage. So base damage of five against Torvar's defense of one. He's going to take four more damage. 13 down to nine. Torvar, Torvar is going to activate. He's unfortunately going to take a damage because he's bleeding currently. He's going to go down to eight health. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change his stance to uh, defensive stance. He's going to gain plus one defense, so he'll be three, two. And uh, we can either run on the charge or attack with this only move four so I can't get the charge and attack but getting the charge might be valuable because that just gives him a free attack too and it denies Corvon. Can he get the charge? He can he's got move four but he can't uh, wait no, one two, one two three oh you're right oh you're right I can't yeah. get the charge oh no you know what he's already got bleed so he doesn't care if he gets exactly hurt. so I'm thinking just attack yeah, yeah just do it all right well Torvar is going to try to skewer Coralt a little bit here. Now, with the defensive stance, he loses one of his attack dice, so only has two attack dice. But he still has three base damage. And, uh, oh, two more damage. Nice. He deals five damage to Coralt. So one goes to Coralt. One goes to him, and then the rest goes to the demon spawn, demon yeah. wretch, who has one physical damage, so he'll take three himself. All right. All right. All right, we're getting there. One, two, three. Now, I am kind of a fool. I forgot about Torvar's on defense block ability. Every time he gets attacked, he rolls three dice, and every special will ignore one damage. He got attacked by that twice and that twice, and then that's pretty much it. So the Demon Wretch twice, he ignores up to two of the damage the Demon Wretch did the first time, nothing the second time. So he'll go up by two health, and then the spawn, nothing. Okay, he just gains two health because of block. Sorry about that, folks. I didn't want my poor hero to die unjustly. Uh, okay, well, that's Torvar's activation. Do we want to move it all to get into a better position? Oh, I've already attacked. Yeah. All right, can we get the Demon Wretch again? Ooh, Trench Watcher this time. Ooh, the most adjacent enemies. I'll go poop to right there. And then, because he has an ability uh, called uh, Whirling Claws, all attacks hit all the adjacent seekers. Yeah, he's definitely going to be attacking Zaurin too, because he targets the lowest health. Well, he's going to throw four damage plus six attack dice at both of them. So we'll resolve Zaurin's first. Which is seven damage on Zaurin. Is it physical? It's physical, yeah. Oh boy. Oh okay. boy. Zaurin down to five. Then that attack would be resolved also against uh, Gallia. Gallia. But here. she has one uh, physical defense plus another one there, so she'll only take five. Only five. Well, she's simply down to, to 12. 12. Okay. Nihilus is the last to activate. She sees the worm there. She's only got a range of four, so she's going to move two to there and then bomb an arrow down at the worm. Uh, this is uh, two damage plus four attack dice. But if I get two specials, we mobilize it and bleed it. Come on, two specials. Not even close. It does four damage to the worm. He's got one physical defense, so it'll take three. And then it'll burrow uh, away f uh, to the f to be furthest from all seeker. Go from there to up there. And because we went first, the bad guys get one more activation. The trench worm. He's going to target the lowest physical defense, and he's going to go behind them and attack them. <laughs> going right oh, for no. Zalrin again. I don't know. Oh my god, it's horrible, oh, no. dude. Okay, well, it's going to be a five base damage, four attack dice. So it'll be seven base damage. He's probably dead here. Zalrin's probably dead for sure. And four attack dice. It's going to deal uh, uh, ten damage, I think. Yeah, five plus two for attacking from behind, and then plus three for seven. So Zalrin is out. He is KO'd. We no longer have our humble giant. That there will be the end of that round. Not looking super good. 
core alt takes that charge counter and has a new ability on activation. And unfortunately, we've only seen one of his five cards. He will assign two damage to all enemies now. This guy's freaking legendary, dude. Well, this new round, let's see what these new charges go to. We have two and four this time. So it's two and four. All right. All right. Well, we can maybe work with those. We lost our, oh, maybe not. <laughs> okay. All right. That's cool. All right. We're going to activate Galia first and see if we get lucky. All right. Let's roll our momentum dice. Let's get some heals or something. Two heals. Okay. All right. We can heal the bleed on Torvar or heal two health to literally anyone else. Uh, we go ahead and remove the bleed with the one heal. And then the second heal will target Torvar, bringing him up to 11 health. Galia is going to move here. One, two, three, four, and attack into him. All right, and we're going to get a little bit of bonus damage against the back yes. of this one here. And he's kind of hurting. We're getting there. Yeah. Come down to 11. One magical base damage plus some attack dice. Four attack dice here. We're looking for some heals. We got oh, two. That's two. actually pretty good. That's just two heals. Yeah. yeah. So she'll heal everybody by one for, or for two, and then she's going to be doing three damage plus an additional two, so five damage to him. Five damage to Worm, who only has one magical defense, so he'll so take, take four. four. So we got the Worm down to, like, uh, yeah, down to seven. Kind of what the health track looks like. And then everybody heals two. All of our homies. One, two, one, two. Very nice. And I get then Drusus will go back up yeah, to his 32 max. 32 max. Okay, not bad. We got, and then the, the Worm does the weird Worm thing where he goes probably to that corner over there. Yeah. Okay, that's our activation. Oh, it's Coral. So on activation, he deals, he signs two damage to all of us. So the two heal all we right. just did is circumvented. This is the highest physical defense, which uh, because of the defensive stance on Torvar, he's tied with Drusus. And then Torvar being the nearest, he'll get attacked. And uh, he's going to careful advance three with range three magical attack. So he's actually going to back up a couple spots to do a safer magical attack. He turn for one, two, turn again, and then attack. And of course, it's going to be three base damage plus four attack dice because there's an allied... Uh, creature there. All right. Well, that's only two more damage, so it's going to be five damage in total. But we are on defensive stance, so we have... Uh, it's magical. So we have uh, only two magical defense. Yeah, it targets the highest physical defense, but it, it is a magical attack. So it deals three damage, but we do have our block dice here. Maybe oh, we yeah. can ignore some of it. No, we take three. Nihilus, the sister to Prince Torval, will activate. She has move five, so one, two, three, picking it up. Four, Five moving there. Puts our second token on Drusus, which means he'll activate after this. She has a range of four. So we got one, two, three, four. That is in line of sight and range. We're going to bomb a shot down at the Trench Watcher. It's going to be four attack dice. Huh. Okay, that's cool. I'll take it. It's two base damage. So it's five damage against his physical defense of currently two because of the cover. He'll take three. Getting there. He's at nine. Now Drusus goes. Everyone's curious about Drusus' stats. Closed ranks hasn't come up yet. But the next card will be Drusus! Most enemies in frontal arc. Well, he's got one. Ah, <laughs> oh, Drusus is so good, but he just kills that guy. Boom. Uh, under advance for the moving, he, he would just stop as soon as he's adjacent to his target. So he's already adjacent to his target, he wouldn't move. He just cleaves that spawn down. Could he have done this? Yeah, he could have. No, that might slow his, that'll slow yeah, his movement down, I think, yeah. though, yeah. After Drusus, the enemies. Coral. Hey, Trench Worm! We love the Trench Worm! The Trench Worm is going to go for either Nihilus or Galia, but Galia has the lowest HP, so he's going to pop up behind her and try to assassinate her. It's six attack dice plus four base damage, so it's six base damage plus six attack dice. This is brutal. Phil! Oh, no. Phil! Oh, no. Phil! That's five damage! Phil! That's 11 damage? She, she got one health left, ten. dude. No, 10, because she, oh. she has one physical defense. Oh, oh, so boy. She's taking 10. <sighs> <laughs> cool, I hate <laughs> this thing, dude! Over the trench watcher, so turn for one, two, three, and then uh, we're gonna try and do some damage to that trench watcher there. Let's stay in defensive. Yeah. Two attack dice, which gives me one more. Nothing on special, though. And uh, three base damage, so it's four damage, minus the trench watcher's two, because he's near an obstacle. You down to seven as well. Go to their last activation, which is gonna be trench d -d 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 trench worm everyone do the exact same thing again targeting the lowest physical defense which would be galia or nihilus and it's going to hit the lowest hp one so uh it's what's just, the base attack what's the base damage uh it's th five because he's, beh he's behind so and yeah that's just there's she, nothing we can do to she, he just her. finishes her off all right that's oh, rough oh no there's the round so coralt will pick up that charge counter he's already got one so it only matters if he gets to four we can't let him get to four here we go. 
got two more of these. Uh, one and four. One and four. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go with Nihilus first. She'll activate. One, two, three, four, five. And she's gonna bomb a shot in the back of the worm. Drusus gets that charge counter. Because we're attacking from behind, it'll be four base damage plus. Ooh, close on the, the, the double critical is what we want here. So it's still seven damage against his two physical defense because we're near that. So it takes five more damage. He's got two wounds left. Stupid trench worm goes to either here or actually over there. Yeah, way over there. Boom. He's so safe. Uh, Coralth, we all take two damage. Oh. I just realized both of Phil's characters are dead. Oh no. <laughs> uh, so this is going to target the highest magical defense. We're tied between uh, Drusus and the Prince. So it'll go for the nearest, which is uh, Torvar. And careful advance three, magical attack. Oh, per active allied creature, no. So he's gonna careful advance, one, two, three, get to a safe spot, and bomb some magic, naturally at the back of yep, Torvar. Of course. Oh, so it's gonna be four base damage and an attack die, but plus two attack dice per active allied creature. So much. One. Two, yeah, so it's a two plus two, right? It'd be all, all on the table, not adjacent, active. Oh, not, oh, <laughs> oh active. No. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna double check to see, I think the summon counts too. So yeah, plus eight attack dice. So it's four base damage, plus eight attack dice. Why don't you go ahead and roll that up for me oh, on there, Phil? This? Okay. Yeah, it's all you, my man. Uh, uh, oh, he did. Three, I don't five, think I... nine, plus minus two, so seven. And I could, I could survive. Oh, defense, yes. I got the, I got yes. the on special defense dice. So he's got... Block. He's got six health left. Block. Block. Oh, he's dead. The magic just burns away at the back of him. He's down. Oh, it turns out hard mode's really hard, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, so we're not technically using hard mode for any of those. Like, the last few attacks would have been the official legal attacks, but the few little bit of the, extra the damage they got... made a big difference. The beginning yeah. ones, like, just uh, hit us a bit harder. Just hammered so. us hard. Yeah. The, the thing that screwed us over the most was this Demon Wretch immediately drawing the card that lets it spawn two things. Yeah. And they ran right down here and distracted Jerusis. I mean, it's all AI. It's out of our control. Yes. But damn, that's, that's the round because we, we lost the prince, so he's dead. So we just have Nihilus, the sister, and Drusus remaining. So obviously, Coralt is going to collect that charge counter, Ooh. go up to three, and surely he'll get four next time. So, uh, new round. Shuffle these up, round five. We have it on two and on three. Oh, we actually got it on three this time. So it's going to be three and two. Okay. I can't do either of those. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, yeah, you're right. You're not even close. We're in a horrible position. The only way we can activate is Nightless. And we... <laughs> she can only really cover this altar to pick up a charge counter for Drusus because we can't get the second one. It's too far away. So we have to hover around this area and then bomb shots down the table and uh, hopefully take out the Trench Watcher, I guess. Yeah. So, so like we just like move there and attack from there, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, yes, they, they, only have, they only have as many activations as we kind of do, plus one, because we choose to go first. We should have honestly... No, they, only, they, only have, they only have as many activations as we do. Oh, they do? Oh, Yeah, because right. they haven't done an activation. That's They'll right. have the next one. They only and then ever had it. the one yeah. after us. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So we'll choose to go first. We do five damage. Minus is two, so he takes three. Seven goes to four. And the worm's almost dead as well. Yeah. That's all we got, so onto their activation. Please don't be coral. Trench Watcher! Oh no. Uh, the, he's gonna try and get towards the most adjacent enemies. He's gonna try and get to there. Two, three, three four, five. five. That's it, alright. And his physical attack hits everything in the eight squares around him. But we realize now that... Two, three, three four, four, five. He would be able to attack Nihilus, so he'll go for the attack on Nihilus there. Which will be, uh, four base, sorry, five base damage plus three attack dice. All right, four plus two. two. Very nice. She'll take five damage because she has one defense. So she's down at 10. She's the healthiest of us. And then that's it. That's that round finished. Yep. Uh, and then that means uh, Coralt gets both of the charge counters, which means he goes up to four, uh, up to five, and he's going to discard four of them, keeping one. Yep. And uh, when he discards all four of them, he brings one of his creatures back to life. None of them are dead. We haven't killed any of them. But failing that, the one that took the most damage gets healed for five. Watcher has taken the most damage amongst all of them, so he'll go from four to nine, because he's taken 16 damage. All right, come on, four. We want four. Hey, we got four, hell yeah. Nice, boom, cool. All right, hope remains, never give up. Uh, we're gonna attack or activate Nihilus. Yeah, what's she, 
what is she gonna do? She's gonna move five, right? So she's gonna yeah. go one, two, three, four. Oh, but then yeah, she's gonna have to, she's gonna have to block it. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, ands, ifs, or buts. We're gonna collect that charge counter, but she is unfortunately land, ending her move on top of that altar. Just blocks it from developing more counters. And then we're gonna have to take a shot of the yes. trench watcher. I want bleed. Give me bleed. Oh, we got a lot of damage though. That's kind of cool. So that's uh, six damage against his defense of one now because he spent like eighteen turns yeah. beside that thing. So uh, he'll take five. Would have would have killed him, but now he's. It's back down to four. Uh, that's it for our activation. No, now Drusus Drusus! Because he's got two. He's the champion, so he's going to flip over. Drusus! The lowest, he's going to advance five, so he's definitely going to make it to him. He's going to attack. He would try and go for the worm, but uh, he's going to go for the... Because we're using hard mode. Yeah, we're doing hard mode for both. He gets we're going to take the benefit of hard mode, too. Yeah, we're definitely... <laughs> yeah, please, please. If we're we're going to take the, 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 the negatives for hard mode. We're going to go for the benefits of hard Absolutely. mode. Absolutely. To give people, like, people an example of what hard mode might have been, he would try to go for the worm. He would go advance five, so one, two, three, four, five, and just end his turn there. Yeah. But because of hard mode, he's going to attack this guy. So one, two, three, and uh, sure. Boom. The special clause of this is any allies that were adjacent to this target would get to jump in and help out on this fight. So it's going to be three base damage plus five attack dice. Five. So three damage plus... Five. Oh, wait. That thing is dead. Off, just, boom, Got off, him. off with his head, dude. Boom. Got him. Get out of here. A Coral collects this uh, this miniature here. And if he ever gets to four again, he just resurrects it, uh, which is not ideal. At the end of the round, I think they get one activation. Oh, so, yes, 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 yes. So yes. he will collect that. He will be collecting yes. that. So he's up to two charge counters. And then we have Coral. So we all take two damage. Oof. The eight on Nihilus. And Drusus is down to 26. Six. Okay, so this is a range one attack. He's gonna try and get one, two, two three, four, five. He's gonna try and get there. It's only range one. He'll attack everyone around him. So no damage. Bless. And we are gonna get one and four. Oh, so four gets discarded. It goes to two instead. Yep, that's not great. We're not getting those. That's uh, not a That guy's coming back at the end. <laughs> that guy's coming back for sure. Oh, oh. boy. <laughs> Boo. I guess we're going to go with Nihilus here, and she's going to try and do some damage to Coral, but that just gets associated to the Demon Wretch. Yeah. So, and which will put bleed on her, so that's not ideal. Yeah. <sighs> but let's do it anyway. We gotta, we, until we gotta, the bitter yeah. end. Yeah. Until the bitter we freaking end. We're going to move. I think we're going to move here, and we that should. Blocks line of sight, That's going to block line of sight. And then this also blocks line of sight yeah. because so he's he, there. Yeah, she, but that means that we move forward one. Oh, smart, smart. Yeah. There we go. Boom. Boom, one arrow. Maybe we're going to mobilize him and bleed him. Not, not quite. Not quite. That's six damage to him, though. Uh, and he takes one, and the demon wretch takes the rest. He's only got one physical defense, though, so he takes five, and then we apply take four, right? Because he takes one, and then he takes the rest of the five. Which becomes Oh, four. I only rolled five. I, I thought yeah. I got six. Yeah, so he takes one, he takes three, yeah. Right? No, four. No, four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There'll only be three damage on the Demon Wretch. Oh, we're getting him down. He's at ten, but now we have Bleed on uh, Nihilus. That's it. So we're going to flip over another card from over here. And please give me the bitter end. Trench Watcher, eh? Oh, okay. So there's another hard mode where you activate him, and if he's dead, that's it. You know, like the other, the, the hard mode is saying you discard that and draw another card until you activate something. No, no, no. You do, you do one more draw on hard mode. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, th that's a different version of hard mode. That's like you can stack different rules on uh, it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we've gotten beaten enough. Yeah. I think we'll take we'll take the little wins we'll wherever the, we can. We'll take the W. <laughs> because the trench watcher is dead. That's the round, and uh, these two go. Coralt. And then which revives the Trench Watcher. At full health. Full right? health. I, it, it doesn't say, it just says revives him, so. Uh, and that there is not great. Uh, we'll try and make it work, though. Coralt OP. Next round. <laughs> okay, well, we're looking for four, so that's two. And, hey, four. Okay, we got one. We can work with that. And we're going to activate Nihilus. Unfortunately, we have to end our turn there. Do we have to? No. One, two, three. Four. No, I think I think what we should do is oh, just go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So go one, one or go one, two, two three, three four. four. Yep, that makes sense. All right, so Drusus gets that, and uh, let's. I don't even know what to shoot at. Oh, she takes the damage because she's bleeding, so she's at yes. seven. I mean, the idea is to go for him, just to get the bleed on him. Uh, no, no bleed on him either. So that's just uh, he's got one physical defense. Yeah. Oh, well, he just takes one. He just takes one. That's right. And then. It goes to the the highest wounds left. Oh, actually, unfortunately, which is going to be this guy. Oh, that guy. What's his physical? One. So he takes, uh, of the four, he takes two. 
Because yeah. one is always assigned to yes. uh, our buddy there. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. And then, you know, we've... Tra no! <laughs> no, I hate you so much! It's, yeah, it's, it's always the same attack, dude. Oh, it just goes right behind her. Lowest physical defense, which is her over Drusus, because Drusus has... Three. Nothing personal, kid. Nothing personal, kid. Oh, Omiwa. Oh, <laughs> Phil and I were joking, the best defense against the trench worm is never leave the perimeter of just the board. face the middle. <laughs> Always face the middle, keep your back to the wall. But no, stupid trench worm has to get us every time, every dude. Every time. Oh, trench worm OP, screwed Coral. <laughs> Six base damage plus four attack dice. So why don't you go ahead and uh, roll up the death. Yeah, there you go, that's eight damage uh, against her one deep. <laughs> she takes seven damage Which and dies. exactly enough to kill her. Oh, she has seven health she left. She has seven health oh, left. Down she goes, and then... Uh, that's all it. Of, uh, that's the game. All seekers are dead, so we have to resolve uh, yeah. the loss narrative. <laughs> Damn it, Phil! <laughs> Damn, dude! We got dunked on! <laughs> that's brutal! Ugh. That would be the end of the demo. The text would normally tell you to return to a specific haven, but maybe it's best if you just start the fight over. Ah! Oh, it's not fair, dude! The stupid thing! The stupid, I... It's still some of two things right away, dude! It's not, our, it's not our fault, dude! It's overpowered! I blame... <laughs> Drusus for not doing enough. He killed two spawns, yeah, dude. He, he knew what was going on. He didn't tell us what was happening until we get out there. We're like, what do you mean this is what's supposed to happen? He's like, let's do this, Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, and then he just sent us up there and he's like, I'm just gonna handle a few of these little like lowly rats over here. I'll go rat catching while you guys go up against all the big baddies. How's that sound? Dude, you got creeped. You got creeped. You got creeped. We got destroyed. The one guy we killed, he's back! He's back! <laughs> I hate it so much, dude. So he's back! I hate it Nothing so much. we can do about it. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, well. Yeah. Uh, hard Maybe mode. we're not hard mode like, <laughs> veterans. Maybe we need to go easy. Maybe we're a little too arrogant our first time exactly, playing. Exactly, yeah. Let's do hard mode. Yeah, it's like, we're gamers. We're league gamers. We know what we're doing. We can do this. And then also we're like hard mode. We're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This destroys us. Brutal. Well, we're at the maybe there's a Maybe that's a mechanic it for a reason and we've just <laughs> discovered that reason it it's even like, said like yeah. all the play testers played the game into the ground so they needed to implement like harder mechanics to Ugh. make it so maybe we should have played it a little maybe, bit more yeah maybe we're not you know uh. turns out this fight was pretty important so we're uh, phil and i are going to figure out what to do next yes i would also like to point out that if the demon wretch wasn't like the first thing to activate and then spawn two demons spawn immediately and because of hard mode they ran towards drusus we would have probably been fine. Yeah, Drusus wouldn't have spent all day rat catching and we would have been okay. That's, and sometimes you get that yes. with these, 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 it's completely random. Yeah. You can play this mission five times in a row and it would be different every time. Exactly. Most likely. That's the beauty of the game. I think that's exactly. a that's fun That's the big thing strength the of the game. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so we're going to end it there. Phil and I are going to replay the scenario off camera. Uh, for the win, just to get the feel for the win. Yes. It'll be quick. It'll be quicker for us if we don't record it. Yeah. But in the next video will be the continuation of the yes. narrative. As if we had won. Exactly. Because we will win. Because we will win. We will win. We will win. But yes. But <laughs> it was a ton of fun. I mean, I really like the way the game plays. Absolutely. It's, uh, I like I like I like cooperative games. I think it's fun, especially if you're hanging out with your friend and you can just like work together on something. Yeah. And it works that way, being able to discuss things and go back and forth and you know make make those decisions with it. And when you separate the characters, make sure that the people who are in control of those characters actually do can make can make no those decisions. No matter what makes the decision. <clears throat> makes yeah, the decision. Yeah. You can talk about things, give up some options, but make sure that when you're playing that way, otherwise it can be easy for someone to kind of overrun on any of the any yeah. cooperative game. So just if you play it fun with people that are with each other and want to be working with each other, it's a ton of fun. And it was really cool. I like the I like the mechanics, I like the idea. I was first wondering how fast like health would go down because when I first saw them I was like wow it doesn't seem like it's going to go down that fast but it did so <laughs> <laughs> obviously Every, yeah, yeah obviously it went down much. pretty fast so th there's ways for it. it it goes it goes a lot smoother than I you know I would have initially thought without having had any experience so it's fun to see how it all worked out yeah these these, these formats of uh, games are quite flexible yeah. especially like, maybe you don't like playing with other people where you're kind of tired of waiting for other people to show up you can just play this on your own oh absolutely you just control all four characters control all four and then you roll yeah. it with the deck so and, and you just it's play fun the story. yeah it. play with friends if you want to play by yourself it's it's got that flexibility which yeah. is always nice which is uh yeah it's always yeah. nice anyways folks that's it for this one we'll see you in the next video and uh thanks for tuning in happy organ